What is going on? Welcome back to Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, aka the Crypto Hitman. Make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you like daily updates on crypto and stock, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and news. This is a Patreon first videos. That means that members of patreon.com slash learn crypto who are in our private community will get this content first. And that only makes sense because this video is their request. I went into the Discord. I said, hey, what should I look at? What coin should I look at? What do you want to see some technical analysis on? And then maybe I'll dig deeper in fundamental analysis in another video. These are some of the coins on the list. So they will get this first. Uh, they will get access to this first and then it will be posted publicly here. If you're not part of Patreon seeing this, it's now public. So congratulations. If you want to be part of the group and to ask questions and to steer kind of the content that you see on YouTube and Twitter and be the first to know about my thoughts and ideas as well as the trades that we're making, Todd Butterfield included, then join us at patreon.com slash learn crypto. Let's get started. We got the pink list here. These are kind of the coins we're going to go over. If these interest you, you definitely want to stay tuned. If you never heard of them, maybe you can learn something. And if you think some of these are crap, then maybe you can watch, make fun of my analysis, and meme me on Twitter. I'll take any of them. So this is Zen. It is at $8.59. Here is the daily. As you can see, we've been in Zen for a long time. We have sold at various levels. We have bought and traded at various levels. If we zoomed in even more or went to a different exchange, you have some earlier trades all the way dating back to 2017 and 2018 when they first turned from Zen Cash into Horizon. So I've been with them for a long time and earning that APR on the rewards. But let's take a look at the four hour here. This is kind of what I have been watching off the lows. It's not quite been as strong as Bitcoin here, but similar pattern that, that we're seeing. And this could be a nice formation here usually you get a couple taps up here a couple taps down here if it comes up here again you don't want it to occur down here you want it to occur somewhere around here you will have a breakout in which then you could do a measured move if you're trading it that way which would be roughly roughly a move to around thirteen dollars and thirty six cents now you do see we had oversold here on the RSI at this low here Right now we're nowhere near that and we're still holding these levels. This kind of looks good for this pattern, meaning this support here, you could have a wick down to the support, form a bullish divergence with the RSI and the price, still hold the support level and this formation could still be in play. This kind of goes with our analysis on Bitcoin that we could see stocks go down for one more week. They'll probably have a little bit of pressure on Bitcoin. We want to see it remain relatively strong. And then we make our next move towards 35 to 45 to maybe even $50,000 on Bitcoin before the next pre-having sideways to lower that will occur. Now realize that Zen is more of a mid-cap project. You can already see it has wicks due to lower liquidity. So this might ultimately not hold perfect, but if it's a quick wick here, then we can say, hey, you know, it's close enough as long as the four hour candle really closes above this line. <laughs> so that's what I'd be looking for. Uh, you know, if, if you're, uh, if you like passive income, you can run a node, 42 Zen for a secure node, 500 Zen for a super node. Buying here probably doesn't kill you, but we think stocks might have it one week down. Bitcoin will be down a little bit and you're most likely going to see another sell off in Zen somewhere around these levels. And you probably can get in on a wick somewhere around these levels as well which could set up a nice bullish divergence for a safer entry. SHIB! Why are we talking about SHIB? Nick, you don't trade SHIB. No, we really don't. We had uh, one sell call on SHIB back here in 2021. That was a decent sell. You missed out on more of a run-up, but I mean, how many hundreds and thousands of a percent do you really need? That was 489%. Subsequently, it has sold off just like the rest of the market. If we come into the four hour here, we have noticed some outperformance. That's because their main net is launching. So I think that probably will be a sell the news event. Um, but SHIB still could be a decent play. It's still the second largest dog meme coin. Still one of the largest meme coins. Uh, and I think it will do just fine with the market. But I think if we're looking at meme coins, specifically dog meme coins, I'd rather have Floki at a lower valuation who has some bullish stuff coming up as well. And I'd probably rather be looking at Doge, which I think we're going to look in this video as well. Because, you know, Elon likes Doge. He isn't just going to let Doge go because he did shill it. He does own it. Um, and there is some stuff going on in the development side that we'll talk about more once we get to the Doge chart. 
So the ship chart for me is hard to trade. Todd has been kind of looking at it. So tune into the live shows with Todd Butterfield. Ask him about SHIB and he will chart this for you with some Wyckoff schematics. I don't have those on this chart, so I'm not really going to comment on it. Again, this outperformance that we're seeing here has been pretty short-lived. And I think it will be a sell-the-news event with their new mainnet upgrade or the new launch that they're doing. And you're not really getting any buy indicator from from uh, the RSI here, from the moving averages. There's just not much to go on for SHIB. Adam. Cosmos ecosystem. We are in a trade recently in Adam that we are underwater on, but we do earn, I think it's 15% APR. Staking Adam, utilizing the Kepler wallet. If you want help on how to do that, then go ahead and uh, join patreon.com slash learn crypto. And again, this isn't the one we're underwater on. We made a 10% gainer here, but we did buy it over here somewhere. I need to update my charts as well as the spreadsheet for all the live trades. Now, if we look out to the daily, it's going to be more of the same. We've been in this forever. We traded a bunch. We get the passive income. But it's down like the rest of the market. And what do we got going on here? Looks like potentially, I just don't like this chart. It's not telling me much. Adam just hasn't done much. What a lagger here. And why I'm saying that's disappointing because I really think that Cosmos is going to be a thriving ecosystem and a thriving network due to this IBC functionality in this next bull run. But we're just not seeing it yet. It's just got no hype. It's getting no traction. Um, and Atom is the main token. You know, it's like the BNB for BSC network, like Ethereum for the Ethereum network. But what I do see is this could potentially be a double bottom if you throw out the Wix. Um, you got, you know, neutral on the RSI here. Now, so you're really wanting to, going to want to see some positive price action here. You need something to work in your favor to get a bullish cross on this moving average that's up here at $9. We see usually when that happens, we get some kind of subsequent push, even with the downtrend that we've been seeing here in Adam. Again, I just do not like this chart from a technical perspective. I mean, this is what you're looking at. You need to get above that before you can even get excited. And, you know, with the weakness Bitcoin's having today, it's not doing much. But from a fundamental perspective, I think that Cosmos has a huge comeback this next bull run. A lot of development, a lot of utility for the token, especially Atom as it is the main token across all, all the dApps that are being created. So if you get involved, if you're a trader, I don't see much. If you're a fundamentalist, you can get involved and stake it on the Kepler wallet for 15% APR. You earn rewards in Atom. Keep compounding those until we get better price action that we can sell some of those rewards into. Juno, next on the list, why? Because it is part of the Cosmos ecosystem. But man, this thing has been a dog. We've had a couple good trades and the last entry has been atrocious. Holding out on hope for the fundamentals of the Cosmos ecosystem. It is a community-based token uh, and network. They're trying to really govern it based on the community. But it's just not looking good. Now, you are getting this rounded bottom effect. Maybe you're getting some minor bullish divergences here. Again, technical perspective. You would have to see some more consolidation and accumulation. Wait for a Bitcoin signal that, hey, the market's going to be bullish for quite a, you know, at least a quarter, two quarters. And then you'd want to buy something as it will round out. It will kind of round out and then make a big move and catch everybody off guard. But man, again, you can stake Juno within your Kepler wallet. I'm not exactly sure the percentage. So I'll just say around 15% APR earned in Juno. Auto compound those. And let's see what we can do into the next bull market. You know, they, they are still super active on Twitter, still doing things, still trying to figure out the token economics that can turn things around. 83,000 followers. You can see they just retweeted something from 11 hours ago. Developers are developing their building. 15 hours ago, they had the community call that they do on, on a weekly basis. So it's just... Ugh. Ugh. Huge hope for Juno. We made a lot of money in passive income that we we're just converting to dollars, but now Juno's down so much that it definitely hurts the wallet, and uh, I can't hide from that depression as well. So, fundamental perspective, I think, again, if we're right that Cosmos has a good bull market, if you're not in these tokens or part of Cosmos ecosystem, start taking a look and start getting positions down here because you're going to be in a much better position than the diehard developers, diehard community members, and the long-term hodlers of some of these projects. That's a tough one. Doge. Now we touched briefly about it. Touch briefly about it. Oop, oop. What I do there? Oop. God, I hate when this tool gets stuck. I hate this tool. Hate it. 
Thank you. Jesus, I got all these dots that are going to be permanently on my chart now. Lord. All right, all right. So Doge, <laughs> 5x short right here. We closed our short position here. And then also when we ran up here, this was Elon Musk on uh, Saturday Night Live. I publicly said all over Twitter that that's probably more on the top. You really don't want to be a buyer up here. And, of course, subsequently it rapidly uh, uh, decelerated in price. But, you know, it, the whole market went down as well. But Doge is, you know, the king of meme coins, still the largest market cap. So that's why it's tough. You know, you're not looking for a huge banger unless the market turns around. But what excites me about Doge here, got a bearish cross, red bar here, bearish cross here, bearish cross here, neutral indicator. Low volume means this thing can go lower. But it had this little bit of a runoff because people were speculating that Doge is going to be integrated into Twitter. If you look in the code base of X now, I should say, Twitter, the X app, there is lines of code that say, you know, coin payout, coin tip, whatever it may be. And of course, people speculate because Elon hasn't let Doge and the Doge memes die. He also has said publicly by the end of the year that he wants Twitter to be your all-in-one financial app. To kind of be a Twitter for social media platform, add in Robinhood for trading, add in Cash App for tipping and paying. And you're already kind of seeing that with the subscription base and the, the payouts for influencers and everything like that. And people are speculating that one of the first coins and, and payment methods on there will be Dogecoin. I agree that that will happen. But right now it is only August. He said by the end of December. So finding an entry with a good technical setup is important because it, we could be waiting four months for that hype cycle. So we're looking really close. Our next you know, major buy signal that we get, you know, we're long Bitcoin, we're watching it closely. If we get another major buy set up on Bitcoin and, and the large caps and the crypto market in general, I think I'm going to give a buy on Doge just to play into that hype and play into that speculative side because I spec I think the speculation would be correct. We just might have to wait up to four months. So it's a tough one. I'm not rooting against you, Doge, but I am rooting for some kind of red bar and some kind of oversold RSI or set up on the chart that really forces me to buy this because I do think, I do think and I do believe that Doge will be a centerpiece once Twitter really gets into the finance market. You can kind of see here that, you know, anything break down below this, you're really breaking support on the downside. Like I said, you already have the bearish cross over here. You got the bearish cross over here. You're neutral here, so you have more downside risk. And uh, I would just love to see some some kind of capitulation or something that happens very quick that forces my hand to give a buy call on Doge because I do think we're going to win from either the crypto market cycle picking up and Doge will go up, uh, the meme market cycle picking up and Doge will go up, or, you know, Elon Musk really makes the day. And when he posts about that, this is going to be FOMO like you don't believe. I think you're going to see a quick run to 15, a sell-off back to this range, and then a secondary run as people start to catch on to it and hear about the news, probably to 30 cents even. So that's a big possibility on large cap crypto project and one that I'll be watching. XRP. We sold XRP up here, publicly tweeted that this SEC news pump would be exit liquidity. Of course it was. Todd is in a buy here around 66 cents. So we are down quite a, or just a little bit, a few pennies, a few percentages on that trade. Um, he was buying it more on Wyckoff markings. Um, with the backup here, but your neutral indicator is not getting much. You have downside support here around 50 cents based on the, the moving average, but really, I think worst case scenario, you see a 50 to 55 cent XRP if Bitcoin gives up some gains, but I think we're going to see some volatility here in XRP with their AWS partnership and some of this other news coming out. That's going to allow us to get a nice 5, 10, 15 percent gainer out of this trade here and continue to, to just trade XRP. XRP is not one of our favorites, as you notice. We only trade XRP around their yearly conferences. You can buy and then a couple days later usually sell for a double-digit gainer. That's kind of what we've done. We called the top here back in 2021. I wish I would have had this much conviction in all the other coins in the market. But, uh, you know, you can do what you do and you can see here the measured move. Look at this. This is the measured move I was going for and look where we ended up. So not too shabby of a call there. We're hoping to pick up our calls again as this market continues. Uh, to trade and gives us more volatility and we're heading more towards the bull cycle so exciting times ahead xrp we're in a trade and patreon.com slash learn crypto but again 
I think we're going to get an opportunity to trade out of this thing. We're not looking for anything major at XRP. If we can pull a 5, 10, 15% gainer out of this region, we will exit that position. It's just not something we love. And we're really just kind of trading what the chart's giving us within Wyckoff. That's pairing up with the fundamentals and the sell call that we had earlier. Litecoin. Litecoin. As you can see, Litecoin's having has completed. Everybody's like, having is so bullish. Now, it is bullish in the proper market cycles, and it does reduce the supply. So if demand, when demand comes back, it does allow the project to continue to go up and to the right. But what has it done for Litecoin historically? You can see the last halving. What happened? Down, sideways, and then bull market. This is when the supply and demand curve really kicks in. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of it here. But again, even if you got this nice pump from the supply and demand curve you're probably already underwater if you're tr if you're buying it up here for speculation right so we're not trading this based off any more having hype this was the having hype pump here we missed it this is the sell the news the event and now it's going to be market dependent litecoin very rarely leads this market and i do not think it is in a position to lead the market now now the fundamental things that it has coming is if the EDX exchange launches, this is what Charles Schwab and Fidelity, I believe, only Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash are on there. Well, unit basis, unit bias would tell you to believe that buyers would want to buy Litecoin. It's only $80. I can have plenty of Litecoin versus I can't even afford one full Bitcoin. So people do like that. It will be a lower market cap. So people do see more upside potential. And then of course, they'll kind of dig into the fundamentals and think they have an edge, think they have alpha with, oh my God, Litecoin's happening just completed. Inflation rate got cut in half and they think they're front running something. But the people in the space, we already had that hype. Um, but again, that might help push it forward and going to keep it relevant in this next market cycle. As more traditional and institutional finance comes into play, they're only going to have access to these top assets, these long-standing assets, and the assets that the SEC deems not a security. Litecoin falls into all those categories, so it should be on your radar, but just not heavily or frequently within your portfolio as far as trading is concerned. I think we're going to get a nice buy set up here. I think this has lower to go. We can get a nice pickup. This thing has some kind of rounded bottom because of the happening and with whatever Bitcoin is doing. And then we do see some outperformance at some point due to the supply and demand curve that it will come into effect. Since it's happening does occur before Bitcoin's having, which isn't happening uh, for quite some time, another 200 and something days. So keep an eye on it. Todd trades it pretty frequently. And uh, but from a fundamental perspective, this is expected. This is to sell the news. It mimics the historical data we see from the last having four years ago. And we will see some spikes here and there that hopefully we can get a buy set up. We can get involved with and we will be quick triggers to sell on Litecoin is it's not something that we think has a tremendous upside, tremendous feature upgrades that really is going to catch the hype of crypto in the next cycle. But it has a long standing staying power. It will have institutional investors and institutional access. And it is on uh, another having, which keeps the supply and demand curve in check to allow it to have these massive pumps that sometimes in the, some of these other altcoins, they just don't have the opportunity to have because the token economics just aren't structured properly. You can see here that the having has occurred and it is now down to 6.25 Litecoin per block. The last one was 12.5. When it started in 2011, it was 50 Litecoin. So it's dramatically down. And it really, you know, based on this decrease in, in the deflation of inflation, it's really been an underperformer for the market. It just doesn't have the glitz and glamour that we see. Uh, Bitcoin gets away with it because Bitcoin is the index of the market. But glitz and glamour, as we know, every cycle we have new players getting in the top 100, top 50, top 10, top 20. Litecoin has the staying power, will have upside, but it'll be it'll be limited upside. I mean, it's going to be based on the averages, kind of following Bitcoin. It's set in what it is. I just don't see a huge hype curve. And the real buyers that are going to push this up are going to be institutional buyers that are used to getting, you know, 10% gains a year out of S&P. So they're going to get into this. They're going to be happy with what the gains bring. And, and we'll just be quick traders. If we get in and out of trades like these where we're making 5, 10, 15%, it's another one of those that's like, and when it's in our portfolio, that's cool. But when it's not in our portfolio, we don't miss it. 
Now, talking about the crypto sector as a whole, we do have Coinbase, and we've been spot on with this one. Thank you very much. I hate that stupid indicator that it sticks on there. It's the worst. I don't want that at all. I just want to get rid of all this junk. Been spot on with Coinbase. We gave the sell in our private Discord here. I even tweeted about it as well shortly after the fact. So we sold here, and you had this many days when I tweeted at it. To take my advice as well. We sold it at 105.80 roughly. Came all the way down. We had a price target buyback at 90 bucks. We were just keeping an eye on it. We still haven't officially bought this. In my last video when it was rebounding. I drew this line hoping it would stop shy of this 90 to 91 dollar level. And drop down into this buy zone. Now we didn't get forced to buy up here. It has come down. We're not oversold yet. We're not bullish on this moving average cross we have moving average support all the way down here at $62 and the short term MA caused a bearish cross here when the shorter MA this is the 9 and this is the 20 day when the 9 crosses through the 20 this is a bearish indicator and it has subsequently caused the sell off now we will be following this closely because we are out at 105.80 so anywhere down in this region would be a great buyback you know 20 you know 23 to 29 percent lower um, and I probably will be giving a call to move down this green line meaning we'll put an overhead buy in place if the price gets back above that then we'll be forced to buy I'll probably be lowering it down around these highs we'll just have to stay tuned to see what that looks like getting very close there's no screaming buy here but man, this is a zone I would love. And I think Coinbase has staying power in the space. It's a publicly traded company. I see upside in Bitcoin and crypto. And BlackRock ETF, if it gets approved, when it gets approved, wants to use Coinbase as the custodian. That is massive. I think that's gotten forgotten about. That's kind of why we saw this run up. And the approval or delay of the BlackRock ETF is set for September 2nd. So you do have some time, but it's about three weeks. About three weeks, so if we get a great entry here, buying it back this much cheaper, that means you can add 29% more shares to your bag. I think we're going to see many more trade opportunities, and this thing is going to get much higher and return to these levels. Trying to catch up to the $200 area. If BlackRock ETF gets approved, they get named custody. I think you instantly get up here regardless of what Bitcoin is really doing. And then the Bitcoin bull market, who knows, but we have time to wait for that. We trade swing trades we're trying to make money we're, we're focusing on a daily on a weekly on a monthly basis to try to put money in our bag micro strategy and riot are the same the update the video i'm not going to dwell on it too much we made a 25 percent gain on micro strategy recently sold a little early but it has sold off very quickly this one did get oversold we missed that buy but again i drew this line live on air thinking that would be the top it has been so far and it looks like we could be creating a little bit of a downturn, trickle in with the with the week of bad stocks, trickle into this moving average and get an entry closer to 355, 360. You know, probably take out this low, get a nice capitulation wick for people who have stops there, and that's where we probably want to go live on my long on micro strategy. They are a software company, but that's kind of irrelevant. They're more of a Bitcoin company. They own almost 1% of the total supply of Bitcoin. And I think they're going to develop some products that enhance Bitcoin and the usability and functionality for Bitcoin adopters. So this is one that is on our radar, one that we have traded, and one that we're looking to buy back. If we can get back in here with a great setup and it's cheaper than our sell, again, adding more shares to our bags without putting any fresh capital into that, join us, patreon.com slash learn crypto. Riot is on the same pace. This one has sold off steeper. We sold this one for some gains here. No buy indicator yet. I did mark this line around 1360. This moving average is moving up rapidly. They could collide here. One more week of down with stocks. Maybe Bitcoin's a little weak. We get oversold down here on the RSI. We come into this moving average. We come into this measured move. And we again, we come into this support level. Could be 1382. This is where you see this previous resistance. It banged, it banged, it banged, it banged. Now it becomes support. So if we can get something there, we get a couple buy signals lining up. We're buying back cheaper than our last sell. Riot is a Bitcoin miner. Now difficulty is rising. But if Bitcoin prices are going to rise, that means their revenue is going to increase. Also, they're getting carbon neutral. So they're going to they're gonna get more attention. They're really reducing their, their 
emissions and they're getting more carbon neutral and they're getting more uh, economically friendly for those who say that Bitcoin is so horrendous for the environment. This is all good things, all good talking points and keywords that investors want to see. Elon Musk himself said that Tesla would start accepting Bitcoin again once 50, over 51% of Bitcoin was being mined with renewable energy. And the data is showing that that is now occurring. Riot is one of those leading the way in that. So I think, well, Tesla is going to accept Bitcoin again. But I think Riot is going to be a favorite of the Bitcoin miners. If you believe in the space, if you believe in proof of work and what Bitcoin has in store, I think Riot will continue to turn this thing around. This is the prices and the hype in the cycle. This is where we are now. Okay. One that we're watching, patreon.com slash learn crypto. We'll find out when we buy back. But this is on our radar and this is the area that we have our eye on. Now, when we buy it, the exact T to the exact hour, does the indicators flip? Maybe. We'll try to keep you guys posted here publicly, but Patreon always knows first. Here is Bitcoin. This is what we've done. Publicly traded in Patreon. We bought. We sold and made money. Bought back cheaper. We sold and made money. Bought back cheaper. We sold and made money. We had a buy set up here. We had this bull flag drawn forever. <sighs> And we have now bought back in this zone. We posted this zone right around here. Having patience. Didn't FOMO into this, the XRP pump and the SEC pump here. We waited for entry. Got our setup. And we are long. Now it's not many much gains here. But when I was live on YouTube, I said Bitcoin was getting a little overzealous here. We have sold off. We have break-even stops at these levels. So we're just going to kind of wait and see if Bitcoin can remain firm here while stocks are having some red days. And if this thing can turn around stocks right now, let me check pretty neutral. The Dow futures are up 35 NASDAQ futures are up 44 and the S&P futures are up only nine. So that doesn't really help us too much, but they are slightly green and Bitcoin is showing some weakness. If stocks have a, a week of red, I think we're going to see some selling off in Bitcoin. Hopefully those levels can hold if they don't. This is critical. This support, this white line is critical. We've already attained this measure move here. We need to hold this level in order to attain the next measure move, which is up around 35 to 36,000 for Bitcoin. So please keep an eye on this line. This is vitally important. Now, if Bitcoin does sell off because of stocks or whatever it may be, don't do a panic short here if you see a wick. A lot of people are seeing this line, and you know when something's easy, it doesn't work, at least initially. So really look for the 4-hour or the daily close below this line. Don't open 10x, 100x shorts because this line breaks for a minute, okay guys? Be cautious out there, but just a heads up, we are long. We're bullish on Bitcoin for a nice move. First measure move target was this 30,000, which we got. I do not alter these drawings. These have been here for ages. Check the other videos. And then the bigger move, you can see, look, look at this yellow line. This matches up with this yellow line. Next move, next target is 35 to 36,000 as long as we can keep this bullish formation for Bitcoin. Now quickly, let's look at INJ. INJ, unfortunately, is one I do not know much about, but it has been doing very, very well. Super hyped in the last hype sucker. wasn't on my radar. We were making gains on other assets like Cake, like BNB, like Zen. So we just didn't have room in our portfolio for ING. But it has been outperforming Bitcoin off these lows. Look at this. Holy moly. It was up 800% off the lows. It's up 560% right now. You know what? This chart looks really familiar. Why is that? This looks like a leveraged Bitcoin chart. I mean, essentially, this chart looks like Bitcoin. It's just outperformed Bitcoin. If you zoom in to the four hour, you'll see what I mean even more. Why is that? Because look. Oh, wow. This looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? We were just looking at the chart, right? Looks pretty familiar. I think from these levels, it's going to trade a lot like Bitcoin. I need to catch up with what INJ has going on because a lot more people are talking about it. Kind of looks like the Zen chart here too. And I'm going to get informed. Now, this is a larger market cap. I think I have it up here. You know, you're looking at $643 million. Rank 67, but I think this might be one of those mid-cap tokens that we need to trade right now. We need to trade in this next cycle. 
get it within our portfolio structure and what we're trading and what we're moving around. I do have interest in it. I just don't have enough information to talk on it from a fundamental perspective. And the chart, again, looks like a 3x or like a 3x leveraged Bitcoin chart. So, I mean, if we're given a buy on Bitcoin, I think you can kind of buy INJ if you want to add a little bit of risk and a little more volatility to the positions. Briefly, we had a couple small caps people wanted to notate. Number one, Ferrum Network up at the lows. It was about two, two and a half cents. It's around 4.2 right now. It is off the highs. It was almost five cents just a few days ago. They got a lot coming. Um, they're going to be launching. They're going to be compared to like a layer zero launching mainnet, hopefully by the end of the year. But also they still have the pre-sales. So if you own FRM, you get access to pre-sales like Gorkul, which we are up, you know, 200% on. Uh, Dead Prez, which is coming soon with the with the excitement and roll bit in that casino. Dead Prez is valued enormously lower, like a thousand X lower than than uh, than Rollbit. Maybe not a thousand. That's probably over ambitious. But Rollbit is worth six hundred and fifty million. The initial market cap of Dead Prez is like a hundred and fifty thousand, with a fully diluted market cap of four million. So whatever that math is. Um ArcX and Yakdao and virtual versions, that's what it gets you access to. And then you also get the exposure of an upcoming mainnet. People are comparing it to a layer zero. So I think there's a lot of upside in Ferrum Network. With you know, it's been through two two market cycles. It's sitting here at five million market cap, kind of you know overlooked, not in the hype cycle. But I think it will have that chance if it gets a couple good grants and a couple good maybe investors in their mainnet product when it launches. So we'll see what happens with Ferrum Network. I am long Ferrum Network. I own a bunch of Ferrum Network. That is the disclosure. Um, it earns APR while it's staked. You get access to pre-sales, and it has an upcoming mainnet. I like all those factors from a fundamental and a technical perspective to make gains on Ferrum in this next cycle. Network. Network was actually incubated by Ferrum Network, meaning it launched all the way back here. I give a recommendation to get in on that. I think we're in around nine cents. Okay, we've sold 53%, I think, of our bag. Um, and we sold it all the way up in these levels, four bucks, five bucks, six bucks, seven bucks. I wish we would have sold a hundred because obviously everything is sold off. This is a metaverse and gaming project. They are still highly active, but the metaverse still isn't launched. Hence why they are having some pricing issues. It's been a lagger, has not done anything good as far as price is concerned this year. Besides the fact that they are staying active. And you can earn by staking with your network tokens or your NFTs. So if you do own network and you're not making rewards, or if you own the NFTs and you're not making rewards, check out their Twitter to figure out what is going on there. I think with how active they are, if they wanted to rug pull this or they weren't going to launch the metaverse, they would have done that a long time ago. Um, so I think they will have a massive turnaround in the bull market. But again, timing-wise, will metaverse still be hyped? What's going to go on? We shall see. We held on to all of our NFTs as far as like the yachts and, and the land. We have all of that. We've been accumulating the staking rewards. But again, we did sell like 53% of it for massive gains in at, in at these levels. I think we're still probably up from pre-sale price, even with it all the way down to 10 cents. But we were selling at four, six, seven dollars I mean, I publicly bought my dad a 1969 Mach 1 just from the profits from this pre-sale. Um, we got access to this pre-sale by holding the FRM tokens. And I cashed out, I think, $80,000 or $90,000 from Network to buy that car for my dad. And we still own like 43% of our tokens and, and have staking rewards. So, I mean, from a technical perspective, too small of a cap for me to say, hey, let's trade here or do this or do that. Not enough liquidity for that. Um, but if we start hearing murmurs of Metaverse coming back, this is one that will, should be on your radar as it is highly undervalued compared to Sandbox and, and some of these other ones that exist. But again, if you own the tokens or the NFTs, check out the Twitter. Make sure you're at least earning rewards in those during this bear market. INJ, we already talked about. And Ample Fourth. Now, Ample Fourth is not one. It's kind of one of those, you know, elastic supply tokens where it kind of wants to peg at a dollar and the token supply changes based on how much it depegs from the price. Now, that did have a time where that was hot in the sector and you could make money on it. I think now is not the time for this sector. I think it's a little over complex for newbies. I think a lot of the OGs kind of already, you know, have had their issues with trying to predict what's going on. It's just a very high level technical rebase token. And you kind of get that when you go to their website as well. 
this does not scream hype to me. This does not scream retail. This does not scream new investor. This does not scream that to me. It's a rebase token, which, you know, some, you know, we've made some money on those. We got wrecked by some. Influencers have made some money on They got wrecked by some. So even influencers are weary of these. You have to be high technical knowledge and really understand how these are working to make money on them. You're not trading Ample. Ample always wants to rebase back to a dollar. So you're getting very small moves, you know, between 95 cents to a dollar oh five. This was an outlier. This is a major outlier and everybody should have been selling. That's why I quickly rebased to a dollar. Okay. So you're not trading this and I just don't think uh, that's a move I would want to make. The hype for rebase tokens is not happening right now. The hype around this type of a website is not going to garnish new buyers. You can't garnish traders like us, you know, in Discord, and we're not going to be trading this thing. This thing wants to go to a dollar. So what am I going to do? Short it to a dollar? That's not going to happen. So uh, just not on my radar. It's tough. And if I really wanted to get involved with a rebase token, you're going to have to do a lot of research on the inner workings of how this is working to make money on it. And uh, some of you might be in that position, or you might know a ton about it, so you're, you're making it work for you. But I'm just not in that position, and I don't think a lot of uh, retail buyers are going to ever be in that position. So it's just not something that's on my radar. I think that was all of the requests for this video. That was a little bit longer than I thought. I might have talked too much. Maybe I'll try to snip this up for you guys. Um, again, I want to provide more of these Patreon-first videos. I'm going to be taking questions from the Discord and kind of letting that sculpt our, our posts sculpt our videos we want to answer you guys' questions and I answer them via text all the time in discord you can see this you know we you know somebody tags us and we answer them and they're in text we make posts in text format and try to give you as much help as we can but sometimes text just doesn't get the point across that point can come better across through video formatting like this so we're going to continue to do that we're going to do that more and then hopefully when this becomes public that information and those requests that occur from members of patreon.com slash learn crypto apply to you. They can help you learn more about fundamentals, help you learn about new projects, help you get some trade ideas. If you like the way we're going about it, if you want to get this information earlier, heck, if you want to be the one asking the questions, we would love to have you join. You get 24-7 access to myself and Todd Butterfield, to a thriving community who killed it in the last bull market. We're licking some wounds this bear market. I'm not going to lie. We took some money out off the froth. We bought some nice items. We went on trips. We invested in businesses. But we didn't get we didn't get the we didn't pick the top. We didn't leverage short. We believe in the space. So we kind of had a long mindset, a long-term bullish view. We're licking our wounds a little bit, but we're still making money. We're still making winning trades. We're looking for the next fundamental plays. We're here for this next bull cycle. We didn't sell the lows. We didn't give sells down there. No, not at all. We, we were able to kind of pick the low, save 15,000 Bitcoins a low, start making trades again, start getting active, start collecting uh, passive income, and we're ready for this next bull market. So we'd love to have you at patreon.com slash learn crypto. Going to do more of these videos. Stay tuned. Check out all the live shows we do. Check out the recordings we do. Shout out to our sponsor, Gora Network. Check out Gora Token, guys. I love you. I'm so excited to be back. I'm so excited to get back on the grind. You know, I, I try doing other things and I still do it, you know, Airbnb business and vending machines and just trying to create, you know, though I create more sources of passive income, pet store, that is awesome. But that had me running around for a little bit. And now that I have time, those things are kind of running, they're doing their thing. And the crypto market's coming back, I can refocus on this. And this is really where I can help people. This is where I can help my portfolio. This is where I can help you guys change your lives. This is what I love to do. And it's exciting to be back in the seat, back in the chair, back in front of the camera. So make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And stay tuned for daily updates right here at Learn Crypto on stock and crypto. Technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and news. And join us. Patreon.com slash Learn Crypto. A dollar a day can change your life, guys. A dollar a day. We'll see you later.